Sorry, nerves. <laughs> Forgive me. <laughs> Good morning and buenos dias. Welcome to the First Unitarian Universalist Church of San Antonio. Our weekly worship is where we connect, connect, and share information and inspiration. My name is Pam Eiler, and my wife Linda and I have been members here for several years, I'm going to say, because I don't know the exact years. Um, my passions include the LGBTQIA plus community. <laughs> for which um, we are a part of. And I also am a fierce advocate for those living with a mental illness. Um, just a quick announcement. Um, for Pride, we're putting together a few things and we're working diligently in the bookstore. So if you could help us, we'd really appreciate it. Let us begin by recognizing the early name of this place, Yanaguana, the traditional lands of the Kolehitikan, and I'm sorry I mispronounced that, people. They and all of the plants and animals were the original stewards of this land. Let us remember their care and live with the understanding that we belong to this place. Our church, at our church, we strive to enact a universal love that binds us in mutual care and affection, especially our work for justice for all and for our planet. Our faith is all-inclusive, and all means all. If you are new to us or visiting for the first time today, we welcome you to fill out a visitor's card. We'd like to get to know you and follow up with you. I did, and they do. <laughs> Wherever you are on your life's journey, we hope you will find a place with us. This morning, we will begin building a be the beloved community in several ways. We will be celebrating pride and welcoming new members and enjoying cake out on the patio afterwards. But first, let's start by simply greeting the beauty all around us. Please turn to your left and right and say hello to those around you. Good morning. And if I haven't said it, good morning to you all. This morning's chalice lighting words come from the Reverend Dr. Susan Frederick Gray. Our chalice is actually a combination of two symbols, the flame and the cup. The cup is a symbol of care and sustenance, the nourishment we offer each other in religious community. The cup is what holds the light it's where the flame is tended. 
It's what we create when we reach out to each other in covenant. The cup is also what can break. We need to remember that the cup needs our attention too. For it is easy to hold up a light and declare that everyone is welcome. It is harder to build a place where everyone feels truly at home. And I'm just going to say, the AC is on, and it's working as hard as it can. And I'm the one wearing the heavy robe. It's polyester. <laughs> Welcome. If you have come weary or afraid, welcome. If you have come with an empty cup, Welcome. If you have come disheartened or disconnected, welcome. For here we will extend an invitation to simply be who you are. Here we will gather to inspire and refresh your spirit. And here we will all be involved in creating the beloved community. Welcome. Bienvenido. Si vienes cansado y temeroso, bienvenido. Si vienes sin nada, bienvenido. Si vienes desanimado y desconectado, bienvenido. Aquí extendemos una invitación para si es simplemente quién eres. Aquí, nos reunimos para inspirar y renovar tu espíritu. Y aquí, todos estamos involucrados en crear una comunidad amorosa. Bienvenidos. Let us start our morning together with hymn number 201 in your gray hymnal, Glory, Glory, Hallelujah. This morning, as we prepare to welcome new members, we will recite our community agreement. There it is in your order of service. We will also have it on the slides. 
It is a behavioral covenant of promises and commitments which we make with each other. And these words were developed by the Committee on Shared Ministry and approved by the Board of Directors and accepted by the congregation in May of 2021. So please join with me in English and Spanish as you are able to re read together our community agreement. In order to establish and maintain a sanctuary of safety and trust, these aspirational guidelines for our behaviors with each other have been created from our own experiences and for our own benefit. It is understood that our commitments may be made, broken, and restored as a part of our process of growth. Nuestro acuerdo comunitario para poder establecer y mantener un santuario de seguridad y confianza estos principios nos guían hacia nuestro compartimiento entre nosotros y se han creado a partir de nuestras propias experiencias y para nuestro propio beneficio. We will support our mission, model, model kindness, kindness to, to promote justice, equity, and compassion, share time, time talent, and, and treasure, honor our past, embrace change, and celebrate successes. Apoyar nuestra misión, ser un ejemplo para bondar, para promover la justicia, la equidad y compasión. Compartir tiempo, talento y riqueza. Honorar nuestro pasado, abrazar el cambio y celebrar los ejitos. Communicate thoughtfully with others. Practice patience and look for good intentions in each other's actions. Learn from and listen to each other. Speak honestly from our own experiences and perspectives. Respect the personal nature of comments that others may share. Comuniquese con respeto hacia los demás. Practicar paciencia y buscar las buenas intenciones en la acción de los demás. Aprender de y escucharse unos a otros. Hablar honestamente desde nuestras propias experiencias y perspectivas. Respetar, respetar las, la, la naturaleza personal de los comentarios que otros puedan compartir. Honor differences. Resist, Resist making, making assumptions, assumptions about one another. another. Work towards forgiveness, forgiveness wherever we fall short of expectations. expectations. Speak, Speak directly, directly to each other or, or request, request mediation to negotiate misunderstandings. Welcome the diversity among us with curiosity, acceptance, and empathy. Honorar las, las diferencias. Resistir a hacer supresiones sobre los demás. Trabajar hacia el perdón cada vez que nos cumplimos con las expectativas. Hablar directamente entre nosotros o solicitar mediación, med mediación para negociar malentiendos. Entendidos. Acoger la diversidad entre nosotros con curiosidad, acepción y empatía. I love these people. I love you people. Qué bonito. How is your heart? This week has it been stunned by the cruelty and arrogance of powerful people? Or has it been gladdened by the fearlessness and courage of our young people? Perhaps you are carefully tending a small flame of hope in your heart. And perhaps to keep it lit, you must turn your back upon the blustering gusts 
of political rhetoric. Perhaps your heart is leaping with each small rainbow that could not have been displayed even a few years ago. However your heart is now, we are glad that you are here because here we can acknowledge the joys and sorrows we carry and witness the courage that it takes to live out loud in this world. At this time, I invite you to come forward and light a candle of joy or sorrow, courage or care, in the hope that these flames will guide our hearts towards love. Thank you. 
and for candles lit only in our hearts, let us give thanks. And if you didn't know, we have a book that sits out in the foyer before the service where people can write down their joys and sorrows for us to share with the whole community. And this morning, we have good news. It is written here that my father is almost out of the hospital and able to return to his UU church of the Brazos Valley. This is from Tavis. I'm so glad to hear that he's making good progress. And I know his church community <laughs> will be so happy to have him again. And now, let us take a moment to follow our breath into those places we might have rushed over all week. With each breath, I invite you to go deeper and find that part of your own center that needs attention. Breathing in, breathing out. Spirit of love and life, I am so grateful for this now. This now where queer joy is a yes. Love is love is love. There is still work to be done. We still have some pebbles to shake out of our shoes so that we can dance in the streets. But for right now, let us be grateful for how far we have already danced, how far we have come, and how beautiful we are. Breathing in, breathing out. May it be so. Blessed be. And amen. You got a story for us? I got a story. I got a story. Yes. Can we get the young friends to come up? Sure to hold them Whoever up. would like to come up. I'm going to sit down here and we're going to tell a story. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good. She I'm Leslie. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. I put mine away. You did? Yeah, because I was just going to save it for home. Okay, how are you? I'm going to tell you a story about a little girl, okay? Okay. <laughs> um, she was really having a hard time understanding the thoughts and feelings she was having. Really? Really, really. She'd fall, before she'd fall asleep, she would think about people that were really tugging at her heart. She felt like she really wanted to reach out and hug and even kiss a couple of her super close friends. Aww. During the day, she couldn't even take her eyes off those special friends, and she would kind of sneak a peek and watch them when they didn't know. Um, she also loved to go to class with this special teacher that really made her feel good. Her name was Miss Smith, that special teacher. Do you guys have a special teacher that really makes you feel good? My grandma's a teacher here, and that, and she makes me feel good. That's awesome. All the other girls at school were always talking about the boys that they liked, and they put little hearts and stuff on their book covers. And this little girl really would have liked to put hearts about her, her special friends, but she was really afraid. 
You know why she was afraid? Maybe she didn't want people to know. Maybe she didn't want people to know. She was afraid. Uh, she was afraid she had a, a secret that if, any, if she told anybody, because she saw how her friends were really mean to people that were different, okay? So she decided that she wasn't going to tell anybody. She was going to keep her secret. And then one day, she, these, this friend moved down close to her in a house, a couple of houses down. This older lady that would garden during the day while her husband is at work. And this little girl got really close to that friend. Uh, she felt like, you know, she really could talk to her about things. And she finally decided this friend, she felt safe, and she could tell her secret. And her friend started laughing at her. Well, she got a little upset about that. What are you laughing about? Maybe she thinks that what she, maybe she thinks that she's going to do a funny joke, so she's laughing in stack. Well, her friend said, it's okay. I knew your secret all along. And she gave her a big hug, and it was okay. It was okay. So this little girl kind of decided, you know, that she kind of have two, she kind of had to be two people. She had to be the one that everybody else saw, and she had to be, and there was certain friends, certain special friends, that she could be genuine. And this kind of led her life for a long, long time, and eventually, she decided she was only going to have those friends that she could have and be genuine, that she could be herself. So do you know who that little girl was? Any thoughts? Um, it might be me. It might be you? Yeah, I was about to say that. I was about to say that might be Lilith. <laughs> it could be, but that little girl was me. That little girl was me. What? Yeah. Me she grew up. How how would you not how would you know the story about it if it was <laughs> Do you know any other little girl story? I do. I know lots. So would we like to sing our friends out? Time to lead our friends out? Yes. Our children can now go to their classes. Yeah. May the road you travel guide you safely. May a friend be always at your side. May all of you find here in this moment. Today we're going to welcome new members. It's always an exciting time. Healthy relationships are key to a purposeful and rewarding life. And we're changed by any community that we choose to join. And becoming a member of First UU is about making a commitment to support and shape this congregation. And it's about opening yourself to be shaped in the context of this congregation. Donna is the chair of our member committee. So I'm just going to introduce each of you and would ask that you come up and sign the membership book and then just um, step back because we'd like to get a picture of all of us. Um, I am, we are all deeply grateful to welcome the following new members, and I am personally de delighted to have all of you here today. 
Andy Abbott. Charlie Bagby. <laughs> Janet Bigler. <laughs> Becky Brenner. John Dagger, who I don't think he's here. Jordan Diaz. John Faltersack, who is also not here. Well, Judy Godinez is also not here. Um, Sophia Hartner is not here. Paul Homburg. <laughs> Tracy Homburg. Emily Leeper. <laughs> Linda Lockwood. <laughs> Larry Painter. Mary Pritchard. <laughs> Daniel Radcliffe. <laughs> Javier Santillan. And Susanna Santillana. <laughs> Marcella Santos, who is not here either. Holly Swick is, however. And Chris Winters. So we'd like to get a picture of all of you if you want to gather together so Karen can take a picture. And while. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd like to invite everyone to join us on the patio. Um, if right after the service. We have cake to celebrate, and I would love for you to meet our new members if you haven't done so already. So let's have some fun. Y'all, this is amazing. Yes? Yeah? You know what else is amazing? We probably have like 30 kids on campus this morning. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, I'm just going to say that the reason this is amazing is right now in so many congregations of all faith traditions, they are shrinking. Now, some of them are shrinking because they got theologies that aren't life-sustaining, life-affirming, and all-inclusive. All um, so I'm just saying, you know, when we say all means all, we say we welcome you as you are. I think it makes a difference. What do you think? Okay. Now, before we came here, there were people who were waiting for us. To get ready for you, they gave money, and they had meetings, and they planned parties, and they built this place. All for you, really. Because they knew that having you here would be essential to building the beloved community. We just can't do it without you. So to honor those who came before and to prepare for those who will come after and to care for those who are here with us right now, let there be an offering to sustain the sacred work of this place. May the ushers please come forward. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm going to put my teacher hat on for just a minute to introduce the song that we are about to sing. It's called Everything Possible by Fred Small, who is a Unitarian Universalist minister and climate justice minister at the Arlington Church in Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, this song uh, comes to me and Brian uh, in our lives about 20 years ago. And I remember hearing it for the first time thinking, I really wish that, my that I had heard this song or that it had been shared with me when I was a child. Um, since then, it has uh, sent an update in lyrics to take away the, the gender portion of it to make it a little more uh, um, updated. updated. <laughs> uh, and it was published in a new book, which is here in English. It was just published last uh, month. And uh, there is a, uh, also a Spanish version uh, which I think is, is apropos for our, our congregation as well. So we encourage you to, to listen to the words. And uh, if you are so uh, moved, please uh, share this song with your children uh, because it has a very important message, I think, that is uh, probably very close to all of us. So here we go. Thank you. We have cleared off the table, the leftovers saved, washed the dishes and put them away. I have told you a story and tucked you in tight at the end of your knockabout day. As the moon sets its sails to carry you to sleep over the midnight sea, I will sing you a song no one sang to me. May it keep you good company. You can be anybody you want to be. You can love whomever you will. You can travel any country where your heart leads. And know I will love you still. You can live by yourself. You can gather friends around. You can choose one special one. And the only measure of your words and your deeds will be the love you leave behind when you're done. Some children grow up strong and bold, while some are quiet and kind. Some race on ahead, and some take it slow, some go in their own way and time. Some women love a women, some men love men. Some leave every label behind. You can dream all the day, never reaching the end 
of everything possible you'll find. Don't be rattled by names, by taunts or games, but seek out spirits true. If you give yourself the best part of yourself, your friends will give the same back to you. You want to be, you can love whomever you will. You can travel any country where your heart leaves, and know I will love you still. You can live by yourself, you can gather friends around, you can choose one special one and the only measure of your words and your deeds will be the love you leave behind when you're done will be the love you leave behind when you're done Bless these gifts, and we bless you as givers. May it be so. The reading this morning is a poem by my colleague, the Reverend Julian Hamaka Ninan Soto. You are who I love. You are who I love. People lighting the chalice in hundreds of places, thousands of tongues of fire, singing the message, all are loved. We matter and we belong. You are who I love, elders staying home and reaching for the tools that keep us both safe and together. You are who I love, Parents holding tenderly all the risk and waiting. You, I love, kids who are dreaming of days of summer, hot and golden sun and freedom. You are who I love, the still afraid one, frowning and wondering if everything can ever be okay again. Beloved, yes. Where the sun rises, the hope of healing also shines. You are who I love, the keeper of the covenant, the emblem of our care. We each arrive imagining what's possible and come away festooned with an abundance of love and a bone deep experience of grace. Thank you. I've already worn out one hanky. Luckily, we keep backups. Okay, y'all, let's have a little bit of fun today. All right, throughout the service, I'm going to invite you to join me in repeating a helpful phrase, okay? Because I'm going to say, because people, and you can say, can be so peopley. Let's practice it, okay? Can be so peopley. Okay? Uh, I, I might say, oh, some days I just can't even anymore, and I just have to lie down on the floor because people can be so peopley. Good. I'm so, 
so very happy to have new members here. And I want good things for you, all of y'all. But I want you to know a few things up front. See, this place is amazing and welcoming and inclusive. And it has the potential to break your heart. And I've seen it happen. A person comes into our congregations and is just astonished and overjoyed. I, I had no idea there was a place like this. I, I finally feel like I'm home. That's so nice to hear. I get a little worried, though, when, when they say something like, oh, it feels so wonderful to finally be around like-minded people. And then I get really worried when I hear them say, um, this place is so much better than that last place. Those people were awful hypocrites and judgmental, not like here. Y'all are completely different. Because that one worries me a little bit because um, I wonder, I wonder if they realize that all of the folks here are just people and I grew up in this denomination. I can assure you, we're all just people. We are, we are not somehow fully actualized, enlightened beings that have the answer to life, the universe, and everything. 42. None of us can levitate. And very few of us can actually completely understand what the transcendentalists were up to. We've read the books. We're just people. And this means that we will disappoint one another because people can be so peopley. We have petty squabbles. Some of us consider the moon to be sacred. Some of us like to think that they are completely rational beings. <laughs> Some of us believe things we read online. Some of us here have been known to say awkward or intemperate words that hurt or offend others. We fall short. We miss the mark. We grow fearful or territorial, mean of spirit. I've seen it happen. Sometimes at meetings, sometimes at potlucks. And here's the other kind of harsh reality. We really aren't all like-minded. And that's okay. Because if you really want to be with others who are all like-minded, you're going to need to find a different species. <laughs> Bees. We can't all be like-minded. That would be weird. However, we can be respectful and curious about one another's minds. That's how we can do this. And frankly, even though I enjoy a thoughtful mind, some of my best friends have minds. I would rather be around like-hearted people. Now here, I've, I've been running us all down, making it sound like we're flawed and finite beings. But all this begs the question, if we are just ordinary people, why are we attempting something as audacious as creating an intentional community where all people have inherent worth and dignity and love is at the center? What chance do we really have of building beloved community when we have to work with other people? Because people can be so people -y. See, the struggle is real, and it has always been a struggle. In the Christian scriptures, pretty much all of the letters of St. Paul in the, to the early Christian communities, they, they follow a very common outline, and it goes like this. Grace, I thank God for you. Hold fast to the gospel. For the love of everything Holy, stop being stupid. <laughs> Timothy says hi. 
You see, Paul was getting reports about how these people in these small, new Christian communities, how they were behaving. And, and you can tell that he's getting increasingly exasperated because like things like the rich people would come because they didn't have to work. They'd come to the service early and eat all the food before the working poor got off work uh, to attend the communal meals. And, and they'd get there, and he's just like, oh. Or, or they were all squabbling over who was going to hold authority uh, or, or what rules they would follow and if you had to be circumcised or not. I mean, Paul was just like. The reason this was so hard is because they were all trying to do something completely new. They were learning how to live by the teachings of Rabbi Jesus, but they kept falling back into the old ways of doing and being, and, and, it, and it's hard, and it vexed even a saint. Because people can be so people. -y. Now, the longer that we're all here, it's going to become inevitable. At just some point, the rose-colored glasses kind of slip off, and we start to clearly see one another as flawed and finite. And, and at that point, the person has a choice. We have to decide. Should we stay or go? And if we stay, how to put up with each other? What makes us think that it can even work? I mean, I mean, honestly, this, this is all still a grand experiment. Church as a verb. Good news is that among all of the sweet and inspiring words and music and beauty of our worship, we have some really, really powerful tools. That community agreement that we recited earlier, that is a covenant of right relations. And that's what's important to us here, relationship, and how we will treat one another. And the really radical thing about it, the thing that would just been made it hard for the early Christians is we all wrote it, y'all wrote it. Your leaders wrote it for you, and, and you all agreed, and, and it can be revisited and revised as needed based upon experience. It wasn't just handed down from on high. It is not written in stone. Now, here's another concept, essential concept for us all to understand. This is a welcoming community, a welcoming congregation. We sincerely welcome all people, inclusive of their many identities. But, really, really important, we welcome all people, but we don't welcome or accept all behaviors. We will not accept or excuse abuse, coercion, threats, or bullying. We will pr not promise that this is a safe space, but we hope to make it a brave space where we can hold one another to ask questions greater than any answers and to live as if we are a part of something grand and sacred. We can't promise that it will all be perfectly nice and happy because we are not perfect and we are not supposed to be perfect. Ideally, when we make our inevitable mistakes, we will be brave enough to recommit to the experiment and start again. For this is the spirit of covenant with imperfect beings. Even the God of the ancient Hebrews understood this. For every time they messed up, their God found a way to re-covenant with them. This is what grace does. It finds ways to start again, and that is what we will do here. We will find ways to call one another back into love and to offer acceptance with boundaries. As someone who loves you, I will happily remind you you are perfectly imperfect. Like-hearted people who are daring to love the hell out of this world. And I have seen that such people will make all the difference. 
because people can be so people. May it be so blessed be. Let us sing our closing hymn together. Number 118, this little light of mine in your gray hymnal. And this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. into this world, please take these words with you. A salir a este mundo, lleva estas palabras contigo. You carry in your bones the dust of stars. Tu lleves en tus huesos el polvo de las estrellas. Your blood contains all the oceans of the world. Tu sangre contiene todos los océanos del mundo. Your breath is shared by all of the plants to create our atmosphere. Tu respiración es compartida por todas las plantas para crear nuestra atmósfera. You are lovely. You are loving. You are loved. Eres encantador. Amas a los demás. Eres amado. Go in peace. Day and pass.